Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, we have like a lot of interesting storylines that ultimately end up like feeding into each other. First and foremost, you have Tony helping the... the, the student and Britta because Britta you know got called a homophobic name by someone and she punched him for it but then it turns out for her she's like but I think I might be gay but it's like you know like how do I broach that conversation with my parents and it's like obviously for um Tony it's like obviously she had that complicated conversation with her Nana but it's like you know at the end of the day it's like it's not a, like you go at your own pace it's a, it's up only up to you to decide when you're comfortable enough coming out and so it's like when i talk to my parents do you want to be can you be there for me and she is but it is kind of a thing of like are you sure do you really have to be so it's it's that hard conversation because at the very least tony's like i was able to talk her parents off the ledge but still um, cause even, you know, Fang talks about the fact is of like, right, the conversation with his dad about being bi and it's like, oh, so then you'll choose, then you can choose to be with a woman. And he's like, it's not like, it doesn't work like that, dad. But it's like those hard conversations is like, right, you can't control like what family you're born into and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's a roll of the dice of like, you know, whether your family like will be, cause yeah, she had her hard conversation with her Nana, but they're good. You know, so it's 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 always that sad thing of like you never know if you're like you know depending on your family whether or not you're gonna like have that love and support when coming out. You know, it, not everyone's fortunate enough to be in a position where, like they might have friends that obviously will accept them and love them, but that's not always the easiest case with the family. Which you know, I've I've talked about that in the past and just kind of like my viewpoint. I'm like, oh, that that you know, it's just kind of you know like who cares deuces to your family but it's like no it's your family like them loving and accepting you for who you are it's easy for me for someone who's not in that position like i don't have to i don't have to deal with those like hard conversations about like you know like those conversations of like being like oh like i i'm bi or i'm gay or you know um you know wanting to transition like conversations like that like I'm, you know, I, I'm just, I I can never, like, I can sympathize, but I can never empathize being in, in that position, you know? So it's just, it's just, you know, so it's easy to have, like, the outside perspective looking in type of thing. Uh, but regardless, um, that ties into, obviously, Betty and Tabitha's, like, not having any luck with uh, their Lonely Highway investigation. So they bring Jughead in, especially because Tabitha gets news about Squeaky, because that came up, like, like the first episode of the, like the time skip of like yeah squeaky leaving and get picked up so like now that's coming back of like you know it's like now tabitha's like oh man finding out about squeaky so it's like she brings in jughead because it's like right jughead and betty are like a team and i think this is a neat little it coming full circle because obviously jughead's been doing his own thing but like him and betty as a team like have helped solve a lot of mysteries like this core group has been at this like at the center of solving a lot of these mysteries. So once again, it's like they've been so divided, but now coming together is when things kind of get figured out. Obviously, Dr. Curdle Jr. is like, yeah, that body you want me to store? It's like, uh, I can't keep it here forever type of thing of like, we need to do something with it. I could just descend, like I can just like basically um, turn it to ash. But it's like, no, 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 don't do that. Like that body's evidence about figuring things out. So, but uh, Jughead works with Betty because obviously this all goes back to Logan um, and Lerman because I was like, oh man, I actually completely forgot about it. It's like, right, he was someone connected to all of this, but he got away unscathed. So it's like, right, he didn't fit the pattern because no one ever gets let go in these situations. It's usually you find the body. So talking to Logan, like his mind was a little clearer. He was sleepwalking, but he was found on a lonely highway. Someone took him. And now we connect this also to the Mothman thing, which I was completely off base of this Mothman thing. Cause I felt like, oh, we're going to find out like that's a government thing. Like that's what I kept thinking. Like it really wasn't going to be aliens. That was actually a government thing, but it's like, no, it, it's a lot more. And it's like heavily connected to all of this. Because from what Loman was saying, like, the fact is that um, he was held somewhere but was let go because he didn't fit the bill. Because it's like, right, they usually go after women, so why would they take Logan? He was he was an accident. And so, what turns out, like, Alice 
because they end up finding like a dismembered body and it's like, well, it's too dismembered for them to know. So they run the DNA test against, you know, Betty to see if it's actually Polly. And obviously for Alice, it's the thing of like, you know, that's a complicated thing of knowing and not versus not knowing. It's like you want to know because not knowing is worse because you'll think like you'll drown in like the not knowing because for her it's like every time she turns around it's like this body that was dismembered she's like how sick is it that I wish to know that that's my daughter because at least then I can wake up from this nightmare I can get at least get some form of closure you know um but in the moment she made that plea that um the bot, the dismembered body as well as the dude who bit off his tongue both of them were stolen but it turns out Obviously, the body was of Squeaky's. It wasn't Polly's, but the DNA from that dude matched uh, Betty's. And it's like, wait, what? It's like family. I'm like, wait, there's more psychopaths in this family. Like, but but even Betty's like, no, no, no. Like the Coopers are all accounted for. They're either dead or like you know. So it's like, there's no way. And it's like, well, there's also the other side of the family. It's like the Blossoms, and you're like whoa okay and it's like right because who where did this mothman theory because Lerm lerman was talking about the mothman who do we first get the mothman body from and hear all about this from nana rose so they go question and i love betty's all in their face it's like you will focus and answer our questions so it turns out her nana rose's husband was like basically sticking it in whoever he could across the board maids cooks like nannies whoever Basically, a whole bunch of babies were born, and it's like, nah, 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 let's kind of keep this away from the public eye. And so she gave that family to what? The Starkweathers and someone out in the woods. And so basically half a dozen unclaimed blossom babies grew up in the woods and we basically are dealing with like and David make like even uh, Tony makes the reference later on like because I like during the whole junkyard scene I was like oh how very the hills have eyes and then later on she says oh the hills have eyes I was like oh yeah that I guess that's like the go-to I mean to be fair it's like I guess the most pop cultural reference you can get because um, I'm more for me because I those have been rebooted like wasn't there like a more recent, recent reboot? Like I know like there's a mid 2000s reboots like Hills Have Eyes 1 and 2, but I think like that's a like a 70s like property, kind of like the Chainsaw Massacre and stuff like that. I think it's like one of those properties like that's actually way older than you think it is because I'm on like I'm more I'm I I remember watching uh, the Hills Have Eyes like one like years and years ago, but I, I don't know if I ever saw it all the way through, but it's like, yeah, the like crazy hillbillies. The, what also comes to my mind is like, wrong turn like which you never realize like there's like six of those they i think they recently rebooted that as well um i'm going on a whole tangent but it's like yeah like the hills have eyes is kind of like the go-to reference when you go to like crazy out backwater like hillbillies like doing some killing and stuff like that that's kind of like your go-to so um but regardless uh tangents and all that aside um but that's what this is like and, like, Nana Rose helped, like, perpetuate this lie of, like, the Mothman. Like, they're the ones out there. They're the ones that created this legend. And it's like, that's the messed up thing of, like, you know all this is going down. And you know they live off, like, the Lonely Highway. But no point in time do you go Nana Rose. Like, oh, maybe, there, maybe there's some connection. Like, you could have saved a lot of lives. Like, you and the... I mean, the Blossom family in general has done a lot of covering its tracks over the years. So, like, it makes sense in many different regards. But it's like... If she had come clean sooner about like, oh, there's this other family, but I guess it's like, oh, I guess maybe there's no clear two and two, but it's like, you should have at least pointed some people in the right direction. Like, well, you want to investigate it, but how about those like, because it's like, she just wanted to just pretend, I mean, the whole Blossom family, because I'm sure even Cheryl didn't know, but she wanted does Penelope know about their existence. Because um, those are her half siblings and everything too. That's, those are, those are her half siblings like running amok. Uh, and those are like uh, Cheryl's like half cousins, I mean uh, half uncles and stuff. So it's like they're running a muck out there. So it's like, but if someone had come clean a little sooner, like who knows how much of like this tragedy could have been prevented? They could have been stopped to be because they've been doing this for like decades of like because they've been living out in the woods for decades. They've been running a muck, doing their thing, and it turns out like oh right, uh, Mr. Dreyfus, the first one that like started all this Mothman stuff. He's he's also one of them. Like it's like right. Polly was probably there when we went to go see the guy. That's the most. That's the saddest thing. Like knowing like right. We were there. Like at that point, Polly might have still been alive at that point in time. So 
that's probably going to be rattling off during through um her mind. It's also got to bother you to some extent, because yeah, that's on the like blossom side of thing, but that's still part of your family. It's like no matter where you turn, there's nothing but death associated with her family. Like whether there's the Coopers with um her dad, but I mean, because like to be fair, it makes sense because it, like it all stems from the same bloodline. Just the Coopers got you know bad blood with the blossoms and they went their separate ways, but it's all the same bloodline. So it's like that entire bloodline is tainted in a way. It's just like it, it creates for lack of a better term, like, a lot of batshit crazy people, like, yeah, Cheryl's kind of got her issues, yeah, so does Betty, but they're not nearly as bad as, like, the surrounding members of that family, like, it's just, like, I mean, granted, there was other contributing factors as to why, like, um, those Blossoms, the, the Star Wars, like, turned out the way they did, sure, but it's still, like, it's somewhere in that DNA that's just kind of, oh, that's, that's gotta, like, suck, so... But now knowing that uh, Dreyfus might be connected to this and tying this back in with like the Tony and Fang thing, it turns out Britta ran away and it's like if she's going to leave town, it's most likely going to be related to like the Lonely Highway. So it's like, right. So we need to like get to like um, dra the junkyard because like that's most likely where everyone is. So um, you have Tony being like, all right, Fang, stay here, look after baby Anthony. And it's like, what do you do? No, like you need to... you. Like, your son can't, there, there can't even be a possibility your son can grow up without, like, you in his life. But for her, it's like, yeah, but I don't want my baby to grow up knowing I'm a coward. Like, not helping someone who, like, Britta asked me for help. I have to see this through. The thing is, like, well, don't worry. Like, I'm going with you. Like, you know, my mom can look after him. Like, we're going to have each other's back, you know? So, together with Tabitha, they all go and obviously Jughead is you know interrogating uh Dreyfus because he's like right I had a feeling like you'd be an issue and it's also the thing of like but why do what you do like initially it was for survival uh, at first at first I interpret that as like where are they in, like because I thought like we're going like full-blown hills have eyes in certain regards of like impregnation continuing in the bloodline type of thing I thought that's what it was but I guess it's like more cannibalistic but then it was like no it no longer became about survival anymore it was just about the hunt they enjoyed it too much it became ingrained in their DNA so that's what this all came about like um but then um obviously one by one like uh, Fang gets stuck inside of a trap. Like they are, they're like like the whole Mothman thing. Like they wear armor, like to kind of play into the story. Because I think it's also like to terrify people. But it's also like right with us armored up, like people are less likely to be able to fight us because we're armored up and stuff. Like even Fang being like, right, you want to take your chance with a shotgun blast directly to the chest? And it's like, yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, Tabitha tased the dude in the nuts, um, and partway through the fight. Uh, obviously, uh, Betty saw the TVK like in like in the person attacking her, but luckily they had each other's back. Because it turns out, uh, Lur the person that let uh, Lerman go was um, one of them. Not not all of them are backwaters. Like in a in a sense, I say keep saying that because I'm sure like that gets used as like a, a term for people like you know, and just in real life. So, I will, but I, I think in the context of you can be like. I would never describe someone in real life as backwater, like, oh, because you live yada yada somewhere in the South. I live in the South and blah, 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 blah. But I would never use that. So I think in under the context of them being the serial killers, they are, I don't think I have to worry about using the term backwaters because they are some backwaters, like, twisted people. Like, you'd say the same thing about, like, like I say, it's, just, it's such a, it gets used in real life. So that's why I kind of have my stipulations about it. But I, I hope I'm not, like, offending anyone that's from, like, Louisiana or something like that or Alabama because, like, it legitimately can be, like, like I said, just in general, if you're from the South, it could be like, oh, you're from, like, a backwaters type of place. Well, I mean, it, it, it doesn't even just apply to the U.S. That can be like a other you get what i'm trying to say I, I hope i'm not like offending anyone by using that term because i'm like because they're terrible shitty people i feel like yeah the term backwater is like fits perfectly because it's like it should be used for describing them the fact is like one of them actually has been helping like he's the one that helped Lerman. he's also the one helped you know uh he's the one that helped tony like get britta out so uh, luckily, Jughead was able to stop that dude from doing what his half brother did, and that was like bite his tongue off. So uh, he, they all get arrested. 
And obviously the FBI is on their way, which obviously is going to lead to um, Betty crossing paths with her exit, which I still have it in me. Like, I think he's going to end up being TBK. I just, I've had that feeling for a while. Just He's been so weird and oddballish. I mean, because also like Charles presented himself immediately that way. And I'm like, eh, something felt awful about him. And it, ever, you know, turned out right to be like, yeah, he, it was, he was definitely off. But I think like, I think he's legitimately, I keep blanking on home dude's name, but like, I think, um, He's definitely going to end up being um, TBK. Uh, but the moment, like, you know, Betty's like, right, uh, I need to know where my sister is, you know. I thought, what my immediate thought was, oh, she's going to say, like, we have nothing to do with your sister. It wasn't us that actually took her. I was like, it's going to be TBK's had your sister the entire time. I thought that's where it was going to go. But he was like, I'll draw you a map. I was like, is he messing with you? But it's like, no. You know, and that's the sad thing of, like, to be fair, it's like they've kind of been expecting, like, to find Polly's body. Because, like, once again, like, ever since the blood on that phone booth, it's just the not knowing, not being able to give her a proper burial and stuff. And it's like, it sucks because there was a part of me hoping, like, they would be able to get to Polly. Because there's so many contributing factors. First and foremost, Polly and Betty were never in the best place. Like, before she disappeared, her and uh, Betty had an argument because like Betty came back after the seven years and it's like right you don't get to come here and judge me when I've been here when you like left home and never came back and never looked back twice and so they never had an opportunity because especially because there was still a lot of bad blood because of the whole farm related situation they never made up then and just that seven year time skip and it's like now it's too late to you know fix any of that so like a lot of those regrets are going to weigh on Betty plus like her children are going to have to grow up without their mom and you know I, I wonder is Betty going to play more of a mother role or will she just play purely the aunt role or will she kind of balance the two because it's up to her and Alice to take care of them it's like just like once again just that family is just like nothing works out like once again the blossom family just as messed up but it's like that cooper family it's just like they're they're all that's left you know like anyone that's not dead is locked up in like charles and twisted you know so it's like they're the last two standing stable-ish members of the family which obviously they have their issues as well so it's sad that things came out that played out like i said because i was hoping that uh, Polly would be alive, but it's understandable after all this time that she wouldn't be. But also, it's like, yeah, like, knowing, like, right, Polly was probably alive when we came to visit Dreyfus, like, all those episodes ago. Like, who knows? She could have been alive then, so... But at least they do, like, it sucks, but at least they get some closure. It, it doesn't make it any easier, and who knows what this is gonna do to Betty and Alice, but at least they have some form of closure. You know, so... There's that side of things. Uh, there's Penelope uh, causing issues with Kevin because it's like, oh, like about like, you know, oh, well, my my daughter's turned this like uh, church into because she's like, right, I started this with the best of intention. But look how my daughter's warped it with her thing. And it's just kind of like she's talking about like very like how very cult like it's become and stuff like that. Um, I forgot Kevin like made some remark to uh oh yeah penelope about like yeah you're part of this as well and she's like well my my conviction like my i'm i'm solidified in who i am i'm i'm my i can i won't be so like drawn in by this but can you say the same thing and it's like well kevin can't because he's literally been a part of a cult he got so easily warped and pushed into that it's like right he's already kind of been down this lane before so he probably was a little hesitant because he's asking like you know cheryl like yeah what do we who do we actually pray to so she's like on the like cleanse to figure it out and so she paints a picture which lovely and beautiful picture i just love the depiction and it's like it represents the elements especially when she's praying later on it's like oh all those elements are tied to her brother in some shape or form the fires he loved, uh, the waters he was found in, and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So, like, it is very befitting because she's like, right, like, w especially considering who the Blossoms are. We get our staple of syrup from trees, and but our roots run so much deeper. And, you know, it's like when, like, when Cheryl actually brought it up, it's like, really, that's really fascinating and interesting. So for her, it's like, right, it's when, you know, Jason's more like a conduit to like who they're really praying to. She didn't really know at the time, but now she's like, oh, like to nature, to Ga mother Gaia. Um, and obviously Kevin's backing out, but like, you know, Cheryl's like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, uh, you are always free to go, but you always have a place here. And you see Penelope smiling because like the point is like if she can strip away uh, like everything around Cheryl, she can take the church back from herself is what that's about. But I think that's going to backfire because I think there is going to be some there's there's definitely something we get in this episode about Cheryl, uh, because tying this all together. We got divorce 
papers being laid out and just Chad's like, oh, I want this, I want this. And, you know, Veronica's like, you know what? You can have it. I don't care. Just stay out of my life because all I need is Archie. And it's like, it's like, oh, that's sweet. But then, like, Chad's all about revenge. And lo and behold, who does he turn to? None other than Hiram, which I'm like, yeah, I figured, like, Veronica screwed over Hiram taking his palladium. So I knew that was going to happen. Plus, like, you know, Chad, once again, admitting in a weird, twisted way, because, like I said, it's all about power and control. He wants um, Veronica back, and he, he thinks he can get her back. And he's like, oh, you want her back? Get rid of Archie. I mean, because that's all that... um that's all that um, Hiram's ever tried to do because Archie's always been a thorn in his side because it's also like you're pulling away like my daughter to t like my daughter could be who like he feels like Archie diverts Veronica I guess away from who she could be and he wants her to be more like him she always kind of has been in certain regards throughout the show but um, it's like yeah take care of this yourself and he tried to he took his shot and it didn't work he says like the gum is fired but it's like yeah and your boy Archie pulled it up, pulled off a of Captain America grabbed that trash can lid threw it at his face so I'm like yeah and I love it it's like yeah so if you don't back off I'm gonna bring up murder charges because she's like how with what proof you dropped the gun idiot and it's like you, you, because you tried to kill my lover oh you're done like I was literally gonna give you everything but not nah, you fucked up now once again, I can never say that without immediately thinking of the whitest kids you know, Catch, You fucked up. You have fucked up now. That, that will always be ingrained in my... Because that's one of my favorite sketches. Like, uh, that show's so freaking good. Okay. Regardless. Uh, what makes that, um... Like, so good is she's just like, you know what? Um... Uh, now, like, I'm gonna take everything and you're gonna get nothing. You little bitch. And they're like... All the put-downs, Josie calling out Hiram. Now you've got, um, you've got, uh, Veronica not only saying that to Chad, but also her dad. I even love, I love, like, um, Hiram being like, God, you're pathetic, Chad. You literally had a shot and you missed. That kid is still alive. It's like, for him, it pisses him off because it's like, no matter what gets thrown at that kid, he manages to survive. I hate it so much. I hate that kid. And so it's like, you know what? Should have never sent a boy to do a man's job, which is like, so ironic that you're trying to kill a kid considering the circumstances of like, how your dad died and everything you you think you know once again it's just like his you know like the villain inside of him it's just kind of like because he's shown like he has moments of humanity like when uh fred died like he you know him and fred did not get along but he showed humanity in moments like that so it's like he can be he just chooses not to be human a lot of times he just he gives into his worst nature that like was like it's all you know I think on some level it was there, but you know, obviously, like, coming to Riverdale, like, sh changed everything. Losing his dad under the way, like, being a part of that world changed him. And just, you know, like I said, there's some sweet reasons behind why he wants the uh, Palladium, you know, fulfill his father's dream. But he's like, he got so corrupted by it. So, like, that dark seed was always there just to certain circumstances to make it grow into what it is. So, But other than that... um, he decides to pay um, Archie back by trying to blow up the mine. Luckily, everyone was able to get out except for him and Eric. Because he'd already put in a deal with her, with Cheryl. It's like, right, this way uh, they can put some money aside to like actually go into fixing Riverdale. Not, you know, if they hit gold with the Palladium. But uh, when it... When, um, when it all comes crumbling down, like, Veronica, the moment she gets the idea, like, oh, my dad's behind this, he's, like, like, oh, reveling in it, like, oh, I did this, haha, when he hears about Eric and Archie being inside of mine, came up, knocked him out, has him tied, and it's just, like, I, and it's so interesting, because we really get to the heart and meat, of, and meat and potatoes of their relationship, because she brings up when she was 14 at her Kinsietta, I, I butcher that word, I do so, uh, I apologize, but... It's like hearing you talking to your friends about how much of a I'm a disappointment, how you wanted a son. And she's like, do you know what that does to a 14-year-old girl? I've spent my entire life looking for your your approval and love. And I think that fits narratively, narratively too when you think about like, despite her ups and downs with her father over the course of the series, she always came back. And that was also something her counselor had brought up to her. I don't know if that was like 
all in season four, or was that partially in season five when they got the counselor? That I want to, I want to say that was maybe in season four because it was a uh, Gina Torres's character. She was like in a one episode uh, thing because everyone kind of went to her for like counseling, and it's like right this like cycle that she and her father was in, and she never fully broke it. And now it's like right, I learned back in high school that I'm in a cycle of death. Like the only way this is going to end is if one of us dies, and you know it's like. So you know what, Daddy? I'm going to make it clear to you. If Archie dies, you die. I'm like, yo. Um, then you also had, like, Veronica helping out, you know, trying to get, like, Archie out. Like, everyone's doing their best. Like, you know, Archie's working on his side to get him and Eric out. And I think I think it's so beautiful. Like, you thought last episode was kind of the last chapter to it. But this episode kind of really, like adds like almost like an epilogue to it like Archie is like almost like he's finally like made peace with everything and because he's about to say like I don't know how we're going to get out of here we're running out of oxygen but then Bingo shows up and it's like no remember like you did more push ups you did more pull ups like than anyone else you know because you're no quitter and he's like yeah but I'm one man it's like no you're not it's like men let's help out Sarge get him and um, Eric out of here and like all of them come working together like obviously it's all in Archie's head but it's symbolic of just like right he's made peace with all of them that they're there because even Bingo's like yeah like because he's like I thought we were good and Bingo was like apparently not I guess you needed someone here to kind of kick you in the ass to kind of remind you like nah like you're not just one man like we, we're here we got your back and kind of gave him what he needed so and Archie comes out on the other side because we had Cheryl praying to Jason and just saying you know everything to, you know wishing that they'd make it out okay and um then like the whole like yeah like those spirits kind of came to like Archie at that time so it all worked out and it's like that's why I'm like I think things aren't going to go the way Penelope hopes they will with the church. I think there's something there. And it's like, you should be happy for your daughter that, like, she's finding something that's actually brought her peace because she hasn't been good for the past years, couple years. It's like, ever since her and Tony broke up, she's kind of been in a bad place. And oh, these seven years didn't do her any good. But, like, she's for the first time in a long time feeling better. But, like, her mom's just so selfish that she's like this is mine you took it from me like there's all like there's always been like this like inferiority she has like when it comes to um Cheryl or whatever like she just feels the need to constantly put Cheryl down because I guess Cheryl just reminds her just so much of who she was but she was kind of bound so much by the Blossom name and stuff that like she got like you know having to marry Clifford and everything like she never had an opportunity to really kind of just live her life and Cheryl was able to kind of do what she wants so I think maybe that's just you know her circumstances just made Penelope grow a little up a little better but I think it's just like she's also like she just sees too much of herself in Cheryl, but also Cheryl is also nothing like her at the same time that I think that's what just pisses her off more. And I think that's why she feels the need to constantly tear Cheryl down. That's always been a constant, you know, they've, they've had a very tumultuous relationship over the course of the show, but for things to kind of work out like that. So we have that. Then we had Chad like breaking into the, um, um, uh, Veronica's place. And I, it's messed up to say. I definitely could see that being like a... I don't know whether that's just going to be like a... Oh, I'm a murder her thing. That felt like it could have easily been a murder-suicide thing. Of like, oh, I'm going to take you out. But like, we'll be together in the afterlife type of thing. Like, it's, you know. Or it could just be like, I'm pure mad and I'm going to just do that. But like, it, just, it felt like it could have been like that. Like, we we'll both go together type of thing. But Cheryl's... I mean, uh, Veronica like was prepared. Took him out. Uh, Smithers comes in and is like, oh my god, what happened? And she's like, he tried to sneak in and kill me, but she wasn't too worried about it, because the moment she found out Archie was okay, that's all that matters, so go visit her dad. And it's like, you know what? You literally tried to drop a mountain on Archie, and you couldn't do it. You didn't kill him. So, like, I promise you, if Archie dies, you die, but he's alive, so I'll let you live. But if you ever come after me or Archie again, you'll catch a bullet. Bye. And I think, like I said, I think she called him a bitch, too. I'm like, man... Hiram's getting it left and right. Like, once again, because she had made that point of, like, right, like, she was kind of, like, and I had brought that up before, of like, yeah, like, he's typically had, like, this, like, yeah, scariness to him, like, he's been this imposing figure, but, like, over the part of, like, recently, like, ever since, after, it's like, after we learned his history, they actually kind of, like, weakened him, because it's like, once again, um... You had Josie kind of talking shit about him, and now you have, like, uh, Veronica talking shit about him. So, like, it all kind of works out in that regard. But, um, that has been, um, 
taken care of and even like you know veronica and archie being together and it's like yeah she's like yeah you owe a guardian angel for looking after you archie kittens and it's like he's like yeah i owe him more than one and i'm like i'm i'm curious you know like on some on some symbolic level i'm like the thing is it's his father looking out for him and maybe just maybe like you know because like i said cheryl kind of brought those soldiers to him and stuff like that so like i think i'm just so curious to see how that plays out but um like i said kind of, you know there's some good like highlights of like oh everything works out but obviously in other cases it's just sad and heartbreaking but uh because it's so interesting because like so much stuff like you can see enough loose ends of like okay where that goes and stuff like that because we're still going to be dealing with the aftermath of everything but like now that the like high uh, lonely highway murders have been taken care of it's like we've only got two episodes left but there's still enough there that i'm like i could see them like wrapping those things up as well because i i still feel like there's gonna be like we're gonna probably be dealing with the tbk thing going forward but like also just the aftermath to just where everyone currently stands uh when it's all said and done um but it's definitely going to be interesting to see where what the next episode has in store for us with all of this uh but really that's all i want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe little light to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye